This is new. Not as in new improved, but new as in new. The first MP4-12C was 25,000 McLarens ago, and every model since has basically been new improved, or new cut price. They run different versions of the same V8 engine with more or less power and sometimes hybrid boost, the same 7-speed transmission, basically the same suspension, different versions of the same composite tub, well, except the 3-seat speed tail. The Artura chucks away all that the hardware, while, you've got to hope, embodying the knowledge gained in a decade of ceaseless optimization. Every single one of the systems I listed in that first paragraph has been swapped out for something entirely fresh. New as in new. It's a plug-in hybrid. The Artura's 671 brake horsepower falls some way short of the McLaren's original hybrid, the 903 brake horsepower P1, though its 182,500 pound sticker is a whole lot less. You remember that the P1, along with the Porsche 918 and LaFerrari, elevated the hypercar bar so high that none of those manufacturers has been ready with a successor in the eight years since. Anyway we have moved, haven't we, beyond the time when adding hybrid boost to a fast car would bring out the pitchfork mob. A quick ogle at the World Supercar Dealer websites, if you can have a quick ogle without getting snagged into endless fantasy diversions, reveals that P1s are advertised at about £1.5 million these days, and Senna's, which are supposed to lap roughly as fast but don't have hybrid, are half that. Ok the P1 is the rarer, prettier and more collectible of the pair, but I think my point stands, the market doesn't disdain hybrids. Up to now, the hybrids, P1 and Speedtail, have been the apex of McLaren's range at squillionaire prices. No longer. The Artura is in effect a replacement for the 570S. You know, the McLaren for the people. The GT will continue, and the 720S. The Artura's price and power output neatly split those two. McLaren has a habit when it introduces any new supercar of claiming, and usually delivering, that it can combine the dynamics of the last-gen Haramskaram LT model with the comfort and usability of one of the core cars. Same this time. We're told the Artura is as much fun as a 600 LT. If it is, then we are very much game on. It has similar performance numbers too. Those numbers are 0 to 62 miles per hour in 3.0 seconds, and 0 to 125 in 8.3, en route to 205 miles per hour. You might possibly feel a mild deficit between that kind of thrust and what you get by paying more for a 720S or indeed Ferrari F8. But what I'm expecting is something more striking, a different kind of thrust development. We knew we had homework to do on throttle response, admitted an engineer. Perhaps because we've been telling you for years that McLaren's V8 is sizzling near the red line but laggy in the mid revs. So the new V6 instant responding electric motor is claimed to cut the delay in half, and that'll surely make things more controllable in corners as well as straights. The electric motor is a disc-shaped axial flux unit just 65mm thick, sandwiched in the clutch housing, and as it turns at crank speed you can simply add its output to the engines which means 577 brake horsepower from the V6 and 94 from the motor equals 671. For torque you can't add them because the motor's peak torque is at lower revs than the engine's. It's 431 pounds-feet from the engine, and a total of 530. The motor's peak is 166 pounds-feet, and it arrives the moment you ask. The engine spins to 8, 500 RPM, which ought to be sufficiently exciting. It's a 3.0-liter 120-degree job. That wide angle gives space for the turbos in the V, allowing short equal-length exhaust manifolds into the turbines to cut lag. Direct injection and particle filters keep things clean. The 120-degree angle also demonstrates they didn't just give the former 90-degree V8 a bilateral cylinderectomy. McLaren had Ricardo do most of the design on that old engine, as well as build it. This time the design is pretty well all McLarens. The new, new twin-clutch transmission is an 8-speed. It doesn't have reverse because the electric motor just turns backward instead. A 7.4 kWh, net, battery is enough for a rated 20 miles of range after a plug-in. And apparently P1 owners have always enjoyed gliding silently away from home or through towns. Still, if you want a hybrid obsessed on efficiency, go buy a Prius PHEV Mister. 
the Artura doesn't have mixed friction regenerative braking because McLaren wants pure pedal response. You've got powertrain modes, Natch. Comfort tries to eke out battery charge so that below 30 miles per hour, or it's ready to use pure electric drive. Sport and track modes are about a hybrid's ability to improve performance rather than economy. They splash out more electric power when you floor the throttle and pull back more electricity via the motor's generation function by using a portion of engine power when it's not fully occupied actually accelerating the car. So what bulk and weight does this powertrain have? In fact the whole lot is smaller in all dimensions than the old V8 and its box. Despite the battery behind the seats, it allows for a roomier cabin yet a shorter wheelbase than the 570S, and it's a narrower car too. Finally someone's noticed interesting roads aren't getting wider. Most of the panels you see are aluminium, fixed to the carbon composite tub. That's been the principle for entry in McLaren's for a while. But the all-new tub involves the safety cells for both people and battery, and the upper front wishbone mounts, while the lower mounts are part of the aluminium crash structure. The tub is made of four different new material subtypes.